Hey guys, welcome back. Now this is the ASUS Zephyrus S15. So I've had this for a few good weeks now. Uh, ASUS sent it over for review, so a very big thank you to the guys over at ASUS. Uh, and yeah, I spent a really long time, almost a month now, I think, using the laptop. Uh, and before we talk about my experience with the laptop, uh, let's very quickly go through the unboxing. So in the box, and a giant box like that, the first thing you realize is that it actually comes free with an ROG backpack, all right? And then after that, you also realize there's also an ROG Delta gaming headset, pretty cool. Uh, and then of course, you got the laptop box itself. Now in that laptop box, you will also realize that you have a free uh, gaming mouse. So that is the ROG Gladius 2 gaming mouse. You also have an ROG external webcam uh, because this laptop does not have a built-in webcam. Now, of course, you get your regular documentation, but you also get two chargers, all right? But we'll talk about that later. Now for the specs, you have an Intel 10th gen processor, specifically the 10875H. Uh, you get 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now for storage, you get a whopping one terabyte NVMe SSD. And for your GPU, you get an NVIDIA RTX 2080. Now for the monitor, it is a 15.6 uh, IPS screen, all right? Resolution running at full HD. Now, of course, the big kicker here is that this is an IPS screen, but running at 300 Hertz, all right? So this has a refresh rate of 300 Hertz with G-Sync compatibility. Now, ASUS also claims a response time of three milliseconds, although I checked and they didn't really actually specify whether it was three milliseconds G2G or MPRT. Now, apart from that, this is also Pantone validated, all right? So this is really good for designers again. Now, it covers 100% of the sRGB color gamut, but actually only 75% of the uh, Adobe RGB, and I'm not quite sure whether that's good or not. Uh, but I think for most designers, content creators like myself, this is actually perfect. Now, they haven't skimped on I.O. as well, all right? So on the left-hand side, uh, you get your power connector, of course. You also get a full Ethernet port, which is great. You get your HDMI input. Uh, you also get a USB Type-A. And interestingly enough, you actually get a separate mic and audio jack, whereas a lot of laptops now just give you one combo jack. And then on the right, you get another two USB ports. Now there is a difference between the USB ports on the right compared to the left. Now the one on the left is a USB type A, but it's a gen two port, all right? Both of these are gen one, all right? And next to it, that's the really important port. So that one is a Thunderbolt three port. So yeah, this Thunderbolt 3 is all basically type C, but it's a lot more than that. First of all, you get power delivery. So yes, you can charge with this. And that is what that second charger is for. Now, you can also plug in like external monitors as well because this supports uh, DisplayPort 1.4, but it also uh, allows you to connect an external GPU. Although, to be honest, I'm not sure why you want to. It already has an RTX 2080, but still, really good to have. And I think of all the laptops that I've reviewed on the channel so far, this is the first with Thunderbolt 3. Now, in terms of the design of the overall laptop, I have to say I really, really like it. In fact, to date, this is actually my favorite design. I think it struck the right balance between gamery aesthetics and also being really sleek and sort of, you know, not overdone. The RGB is not overdone. Although we'll speak about the RGB a bit later. The design of it is really sleek. And not just the design, but surprisingly, despite the really powerful uh, CPU, really powerful GPU, it's really thin and really light. In fact, ASUS actually claims that this is 25% thinner and 42% lighter than other gaming laptops in this class. Now, obviously, I don't have every gaming laptop in this class, so I'm not able to verify it. But what I will say, though, considering the specs of this, it is surprisingly light. Although, having said that, for me, I'm used to chunky laptops because a lot of laptops that I've had have all been gaming laptops. If you're very used to, you know, like your Microsoft Surface Pro or tablets or like thin and light laptops, yes, you will feel a difference. But considering everything, this is ridiculously light. And a really big part of that is due to the magnesium alloy chassis that it has. And not just that, in the inside, it's got sort of a honeycomb structure, which adds to the rigidity. And yes, this is really tough. It has almost no flex. Now, even the touchpad, I really like. But then again, Asus has nailed almost every laptop that I reviewed. The touchpad has always been really good. Gaming laptop or not, they've always been really nice. The only issue I have here is the keyboard. Now, not that it's a bad keyboard, uh, I just find that the keyboard is a little mushy, even though it's normal checklist style keyboards. Now, it could be because I'm so used to mechanical keyboard nowadays, but I still have my Surface Pro 4 uh, with that keyboard, and that's also 
uh, a chiclet keyboard, but that one feels a bit more rigid than this. I don't know why, but it feels really mushy or like even spongy. The other thing though is the RGB lighting. Now, as you can see here, it's nice, it's really vibrant and it's really bright despite being under all like, you know, the studio lights. The issue is that if you actually make the light static, you will notice that it's not exactly uniform. Now, in a lot of the keys where you have like just one symbol to light up, it's totally fine. But like towards the edges, like the caps lock and the shift, if you look closely, you realize that not the entire key is illuminated. But to be honest, you're gonna have to look for it uh, to notice it. Other than that, I, I really think it's fine. Which now brings me to what is probably the most unique uh, feature of this laptop and it's really got to do with its cooling. Now for one thing, they actually use liquid metal uh, for cooling their CPU, but that's not actually what I was referring to. Now with a lot of Asus laptops, it, it's sort of become a, a signature gaming laptop or not, where you actually have the base of the left, uh, laptop lifted up by the screen when you lift it up because the back of it sticks out and then it raises the, the base of the laptop. Well, this has a total redesign and in my opinion, even almost over-engineered. Now, what happens is when you lift up the laptop screen, the base of the laptop lifts up, all right? I've never seen that before. You do get RGB lights underneath just to make it a little bit more obvious, but that's incredible. So when you lift up the bottom, the bottom opens up a bit, uh, letting more airflow uh, in turn cooling the whole laptop. Oh, that's incredible and honestly it's almost like asus is just showing off now in terms of the designs that they come up with it's absolutely incredible but again like i said there is a practical uh, use to that as well because you don't have the base of the screen poking your leg if you have it on your lap it's just the base that lifts up a bit you don't feel it at all and because of that you don't actually need any vents at the bottom if you look at the bottom of the laptop there are no vents you will see vents at the bottom left and right but those are actually the speakers oh and by the way the speakers are pretty good for laptop speakers but if you can get a headset or buy speakers Although I do think there is one issue, although I'm not sure if this design is the cause. Now, one thing to note when you're gaming, the fan gets really loud. I mean, like really, really loud. I've never heard a gaming fan get that loud, which makes me wonder whether the reason why it's so loud is because the base opens up. So maybe there's less uh, noise suppression or noise insulation. I'm really not sure. Um, but yeah, it does get really loud and I don't have a decibelometer or something to test it out But I did check online and some people claim that it actually went up to 60 decibels Which is pretty loud because the average laptop goes between about 30 to 40 decibels So my recommendation is if you game on this laptop and you're very sensitive to fan noise I would say get a headset. I think that's the only way you won't hear the fan So about the screen now again, like I said, it has a refresh rate of a whopping 300 Hertz has a response time of three milliseconds, although I don't know whether that's due to G and PRT. Now, in terms of color, I've got no issue. I really like it. I think it's one of the best I've reviewed so far in terms of laptop screens. Um, however, I do find the screen a little bit dark. Uh, not, not really dark, but I would say a little bit dim than what I'm used to. Now, I think a big part of that is because of the very high refresh rate, so it can't get really bright. Now, I don't have the exact uh, nits or peak brightness of this because I actually couldn't find it on the ASUS website as well. They didn't actually specify. But if I were to guess, I would say it's somewhere in the round, maybe 300. I'll try and find out. And if I find out by the time I'm editing this, I'll, I'll put it down at the bottom. But right now, yeah, it does seem a bit dim. However, in most spaces, unless you're like direct sunlight, it should be totally fine. Uh, and like I said, it's Pantone validated as well. So if you're a designer, uh, you work with color sensitive stuff, you know, or even a content creator, video editor, it is definitely good enough. Now, I actually think that the 300 Hertz might be a little bit overkill, even though it's got a whopping RTX 2080, which is not a Max Q, by the way. Now, the reason is most AAA titles, when I tested it out, none of them went over 110, 130, maybe FPS. I can't quite remember, but I'll put the, the benchmarks here. Now, and of course on high because you don't want to I, I if i play any game i would i would sort of prioritize the look rather than the the, the number of frames depending on the game of course but like most triple a titles i always pri prioritize picture quality and you're never going to get anything above 120 even like shadow of the tomb raider i think i averaged about 110 120 uh, even on dota which is not a very graphic intensive game if i put everything on high i get about i think it's about 130 140 frames anyway now, I think you would have to play like 
proper esports titles like you know uh, Counter Strike, maybe Overwatch and all that to get the full use of that 300 hertz. Otherwise, you're never going to hit it anyway. Now, I'm pretty sure ASUS put this screen here uh, more as a showcase to tell people that yeah, we have the technology, we can put this here. But honestly, um, 180 hertz or even a 240 hertz would have been totally fine. And now we come to every gaming laptop's biggest nemesis, <laughs> the battery life, all right? Uh, although having said that, this laptop is respectable depending on what you're talking about. Now with normal usage, I actually got about eight hours because it does have uh, discrete graphics like your NVIDIA. It also has integrated graphics, which is switches between depending on what you're doing. So when I don't use the RTX 2080, I get like, you know, a very easy eight hours. I think it wasn't an issue at all, which is really good enough for everyday use to bring it out and back home. Eight hours is perfectly fine. Now I'm going to make this very clear. Don't game if you're not plugged into a charger for two major reasons. Number one, I didn't even get an hour. I think I got a little under an hour in terms of gaming. But not just that, if you don't plug in, it heavily handicaps the GPU. And, and the best example I can give is that when I played Dota 2, when I plugged it in, I got like that, I think it was 130, 140 FPS. When I unplugged it, it plummeted to 30 and it capped at 30, which makes me think that it was enforced 30. It, it didn't let you go anything above that. Uh, experience was horrible and the battery drained like crazy, right? So don't pay on battery, which now brings me to the point of the two chargers. So why does Asus give you two chargers? Now, one is a type C charger, which I would say is used on the go, you know, if you know you're going to go out and you're not going to game, it's a great charger to bring out because number one, it's a lot smaller, all right? It charges slower, obviously, because the main charging brick, the big one that you should use while you're gaming is a whopping 240 watts, all right? Whereas the Type-C charger is only 65. So that will be fine if you go out, you know, and you're just surfing the internet or you're just using it. I think even if you were to use like, you know, Adobe Premiere Pro and all that, no issue. All right, so let's talk about the price. So the Asus Zephyrus S15, comes in at $4,998 Singapore dollars, all right? Now, that is a lot of money, and I would agree. So now, if you go to the ASUS store, you can actually get it for $3,998, basically $4,000 Singapore dollars. So obviously, the big question is, should you buy this laptop? Now, for some people, I would say a definite yes. Now, like I said, if you're someone actually kind of like me, if you need something portable that is really good to game at, really good for your video editing work or color sensitive work. This actually ticks both boxes equally well. Uh, it's one of the first laptops that I reviewed that hasn't compromised too much either way. It does both extremely well. You get a fantastic GPU. Um, you get a good screen, uh, both in terms of gaming and of course, in terms of color work as well, uh, because it's Pantone validated. In fact, I'm gonna give this laptop a four out of five stars and a Technobabble recommended logo. Now, the only reason I'm not giving it five stars because I'm not a fan of the keyboard. Like I say, I find it a bit mushy or spongy. Uh, but other than that, everything else, it takes all the boxes that I actually need. Uh, it's perfect for me. Uh, but yeah, I, I think right now, in terms of gaming and color work again, this might be the best bet. All right, and that about wraps up my review of the ASUS Zephyrus S15. Now, if you like this video, you know what to do, and I would love it if you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications on our next video. I'm JP, and I'll see you real soon.